I was watching this video on YouTube about Zimbabwe, how they're now uh, charging gold for everything. The currency is worthless. They, they won't accept the currency. So I was inspired uh, by this video uh, to make a video. Um, uh, this uh, video response goes out really to the whole world as the whole world is heading into the situation that these people are in right now. Um, now hopefully they'll give us an opportunity real quick to see that. Take a look at all that green in the background there. Um, these people, they're complaining of starvation, yet the land is lush. Uh, now, they're upset about not being able to buy bread and grain but they have all that food around them and there's kids there that say that they haven't eaten in three days. Uh, the economy in general worldwide is abysmal right now and what we're heading into is going to make the Great Depression look like a day in the park. We're going into right now world oil production decline with approximately 6.7 billion people in the world. Uh, world oil production decline is the year after year drop of oil production worldwide. Now, oil production, uh, it goes into modern agriculture by fertilizers and pesticides. They require, uh, or they are based on petrochemicals. Uh, they also require factories to be running in order to uh, produce the fertilizer and the pesticide. Uh, also, to run the factories, you got to transport the coal from the mountains into the power plants. Um, uh, so, uh, as oil production plummets, which is what we're in right now, plummeting oil production worldwide, uh, there will be this uh, effect on agriculture that the food that people used to eat that used to just show up to the store and they used to pay some dollars for it's not going to be there so uh, by by reasonable estimates it's going to take 40 years to replace the infrastructure the industrial infrastructure that allows us to enjoy the lifestyle that we have been living the egregious injury to humanity that is occurring and will uh, become worse in the years to follow. It's not necessary. It is the result of the financially and the militantly dominant being so greatly empowered right now, today. Uh, they're also essentially addicted to their power, like uh, as it's worse than a crack addiction that these people they can buy sex, drugs, uh, they can buy politicians, they can buy whatever it is that'll make their life comfortable, yachts and cars. They can buy the guns and whatnot. And they see that a time is approaching when people are not going to continue to accept cash to perform these people's bidding. That people are going to recognize that their basic survival is not going to be by tagging on the coattails of these super dominant ultra rich people they're they're creating a situation in which masses of people will be murdered uh, this uh, famine uh, essentially uh, famine at the grocery store in Zimbabwe uh, is a contrived uh, situation that will in all likelihood result in massive military catastrophe that eventually roaming gangs will get together and be shaking people down for their food and uh, life will be by the gun. Uh, to survive uh, you'll have to be the toughest. So uh, it's more than uh, just the, uh, the dearth of food. It is disease, war, uh, financial straits, there's a lot of methods that the financially and the militantly dominant employ to murder people, to off people, so that they can continue their dominance. Uh, the point of this video is uh, to uh, reduce 
famine as a uh, potential to cause to cause that murder that these people are seeking to uh, seeking to uh, force onto the general population. Uh, how so? How, how is it that uh, the famine can be held off from murdering people? What I recognize can be done about the lack of food in grocery stores is to eat wild food. Now, uh, this greenery that we see in the background there, likely 99% of it is edible that you know if these people just went to the trees and they tore down leaves off the trees they could eat that and they would be starving and they'd survive this uh, famine uh, some wild food is not edible though and uh, to protect people who are choosing to eat wild food from being killed by the wild food this is a method that I am aware of can be used the first thing that you do is you gather the plant in your hand uh, the plant that uh, you observe, it doesn't have much hair, uh, it's not some bright red color, it looks like it might be edible. It's greenery. Uh, you, you hold it in your hand. Uh, if after about 10 minutes it doesn't make your fingers itchy or irritated, then you press it to your lips. You wait about 20 minutes. If after 20 minutes it has not irritated your lips, then you bite off and you chew a very small piece. Chew it for about 10 minutes. Just hold it in your mouth. If after 10 minutes it did not, it did not irritate the inside of your mouth, then go ahead and swallow it down and then wait 24 hours. Now, after 24 hours, if the plant didn't irritate your stomach, uh, it hasn't otherwise made you ill, then it's likely fairly safe to eat. Now, uh, it's best really to learn the wild plants in your area ahead of time. That way you don't have to use this method to test the food that you already know what is out there is edible. If you want to do some research on Google on how to find wild foods in your area, then uh, these are some search terms I would suggest. Uh, edible wild foods guide and uh, also add in the region that you live in. Like, let's say you live in the Northeast region like me, then you put in Edible Wild Foods Guide, Northeast region, uh, possibly Northeast America. Uh, if you lived in Zimbabwe, you might try Zimbabwe. I don't know what other areas there are in Zimbabwe where uh, there would be particular um, types of wild food if there's different, um, I don't know, like if there's mountainous lands and uh, valleys and whatnot, and uh, there might be some separation between the two of what types of foods you would find in each of those areas. Uh, then uh, you might try, uh, say you live in a mountainous region, Zimbabwe Mountainous Edible Wild Foods Guide. I don't know how well the, uh, that search would work overseas. I do know that I found plenty in uh, plenty North American foods on Google uh, using those search terms, and uh, most of them had been recorded by the Native Americans. That um, the Native Americans, these people who have uh, suffered the name Indian for so long, when India is on the other side of the world, they, uh, from for having lived here for millennia, recorded probably all of the wild foods, uh, I don't know, virtually all of the wild foods, and they recorded various uses for the wild foods, uh, especially uh, anti-parasitic uses, I don't know, what, um, uh, what, what is uh, antibacterial, stuff like that. I don't know, they, they even recorded what plants work well against the irritation that might be caused by other plants. <laughs> so, I don't know, in uh, Zimbabwe, uh, what uh, I might do, um, if Google is not an option, obviously, is to try to find a tribal elder from some backwoods community where they never started depending on the grain delivered by truck. People that have been living off the land for, uh, for the duration. Uh, now, I don't even know if there's people like that in Zimbabwe. I'm just guessing that there is. But uh, those would be the people to go to to find out, who, uh, find out what it is out there that can... Uh, that can serve as food. Thanks for watching.